In this Where Are They Now episode, we speak with Caitlin Sloan, a high school math teacher from Georgia, who's back to update us on how she's managed since sharing some struggles to bring a problem-based approach to some of her support students. Yeah, after sharing the changes she's made in her approach, we then dig into her most recent focus for her math classroom, communication. How can we emphasize communication so we can build 21st century mathematicians? Listen in and hear some of the ideas and strategies. This is another Math Mentoring Moment episode where we chat with an educator just like you who's working through some of those common problems of practice. And mm -hmm. together, we work to brainstorm some ways to overcome them. Yeah. And before we dive into the conversation with Caitlin, uh, have you submitted a, a math class pebble in your shoe? Be sure to share a couple sentences with us over at makemathmoments.com forward slash mentor. That's makemathmoments.com forward slash mentor. So we can bring you on an episode and uh, chat real soon about, uh, about your pebble in your shoe. Caitlin did it and uh, we're chatting with her today. We can't wait to bring on some other math moment makers just like you. So uh, before we get going, let's uh, bring in the intro. Welcome to the Making Math Moments That Matter podcast. I'm Kyle Pierce. And I'm John Orr. We are two math teachers from MakeMathMoments.com who together with you, the community of math moment makers worldwide who want to build and deliver math lessons that spark curiosity, fuel sense making, and ignite your teacher moves. Welcome everyone to another Math Mentoring Moment episode. And it's not just a regular Math Mentoring Moment episode. It is a Where Are They mm -hmm. Now episode. And uh, these are some of our favorite because, you know, not only do yeah, we get are. to go back down memory lane and sort of relive that experience, but then we actually get to have that conversation and sort of see where things are now. Yeah, it's a great to hear the journey from before into into now and and keep that journey going. And uh, they, like Kyle said, they are some of our favorite uh, episodes or, or just conversations to chat with uh, the math moment maker community folks, just like you. Um, and in this episode, we talked with Caitlin who, mm -hmm. you know, was, 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 you know, was battling with some, some ideas about how to teach math in her class versus what was happening in the, uh, the on class or on, on grade level classes. And she was trying to figure that out to help best support her, your students. So uh, a recommendation here for you uh, is to head on over to episode 132. Uh, if you listen to her previous episode, you're going to want to do that. So you can benefit the most here from her, her journey, um, you can hear episode 132 by heading on over to makemathmoments.com forward slash episode 132 or scrolling down uh, and oh, Kyle, we better say the title because sometimes your your podcast platform might not show you the episode number anymore. Yeah. So uh, we just had the title. Yeah, um, it's I'm a math support it. teacher and I feel trapped. Help. And uh, you know what? In that episode, you know, you hear all about the the pebble that was in her shoe then. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to hear how things are going now. And we're going to learn about sort of her current focus, which has sort mm -hmm. of shifted uh, a little bit further away from that idea, which I, is, is just sort of a great reminder for all of us to think about like the struggle that you have now or what you're focusing on in your classroom right this moment, uh, a year from now may be very different. And that's exactly. kind of the beauty of this profession, right? Is the constant growth that we have. And, uh, and if you're listening to this podcast right now, then obviously you're all about growing and uh, getting better in your practice. So uh, we're, we're sure you're going to learn something we did, and uh, we will see you on the other side of this episode. Let's dig in. Hey there, Caitlin. Thanks again for joining us on another episode of the Making Math Moments That Matter podcast. Caitlin, you were with us way back. Actually, it wasn't too far away, but over a year ago, we chatted with you and we're welcoming you back around episode 132 was uh, you were with us, but hey, we're glad to have you back. I'm excited to be back. 
I have a funny feeling, Caitlin, that when we were chatting uh, about a year ago, that, you know, we were probably um, having, you know, this conversation about like how hopefully COVID would be over and done with and all of these (laughs) things. And then look at us, because like that was a year into the whole COVID thing. And now we're a year removed from that. And, uh, and, uh, you know, I don't know if I should be proud to say it, but friends, I'm uh, I'm COVID positive as we record this, so yeah, you know, we are all oh. in different rooms. Yeah, <laughs> we are separate. You but... uh, you uh, you messaged me the other day and uh, said, "Hey, I got it," and then and I had it the week before, so I don't think I gave it to oh, you, Kyle. Wow. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> so it, it's it's you know I I I'm I'm just saying it because it's like uh, who would have thought that this is where yeah. we would be? So I've I dodged know. it for two years, and and here we are. But uh, Caitlin. Um, you know what, let everybody know just a little bit about yourself. I know that there's many people out there who may have already heard that episode, but they might need to sort of, you know, almost like, uh, you know, brush up on their memory a little bit and kind of, you know, help them remember a little bit about who you are and where you're from. So uh, let them have it again. Yeah. Um, so I'm Caitlin Sloan. I am a high school math teacher in the state of Georgia in the U.S., and a little bit north of Atlanta. I actually teach at the high school that I graduated from, so that's Mm. super cool. Um, And last year, I taught geometry, honors geometry, geometry support, and virtual geometry, and this, just a few (laughs) things, Um, and this year, we've actually changed it up, so I still teach geometry and honors geometry, but I also teach AP Calculus now, so um, a little bit different. Nice. And I've taught middle school before, and I've taught in the college setting before, so I've seen a little bit of everything. You, Yeah, you have seen a little bit of everything. Caitlin, when we chatted uh, last time, uh, we were, you were, you were uh, the, that support geometry teacher, and some of the things that I remember talking to you about uh, were that uh, you, were, you had that group of support students, and you were trying to help them see that math could be, you know, be fun and different and, and try to help those students as best uh, you can. Um, and but they also had this kind of disconnect, if I remember correctly, where they where were going to their other classroom uh, for geometry and then coming to you and then they were like, wait a minute, that teacher's teaching me these rules that I'm supposed to follow, but you're right. trying to, you're trying to help me in that. And they're not, the kids weren't seeing how that went. And I remember us chatting about trying to, right. to dive in deeper about like trying to make that connection and show kids that, Hey, you might, you might have that rule already, but if, it, if you don't know how it works, I can show you a better method on how to do that. So I, I right. remember chatting about all those things, but uh, I'm curious um, about, what happened after? So, so we chatted about all those things. And if, if the listener right now wants a little recap, go back and listen to episode 132. Uh, we chatted with Caitlin, but Caitlin, after that conversation, I'm curious, what happened? Did you, did you go and try some of those things? Fill us in on the journey since then. Yeah. Um, so I was really struggling with this idea of, I wanted them to be able to discover and see math as like deeper than a set of rules and procedures. And I think that's kind of where we all are. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's all they were getting in their regular math class. So like you said, there was this disconnect. And I actually see that a lot with my high level students too, because mm-hmm. they're so quick mm-hmm. to go back to what they always know. And they look for that algorithm or whatever online Um, And so we talked about focusing more on making sure that they're understanding the rationale. And so I went back to kind of my core goal, which is to build mathematicians. And Mm -hmm. that's always been my goal teaching math is I want kids to engage genuinely with the mathematics. And so I started kind of teaching them the way that I would tutor them which we also talked about that, Mm -hmm. where um, I'm like, okay, so let's break down how this works. How could I generalize this idea to, um, so that I don't have to remember so many things, so I don't have to remember so many rules. And that really did, I feel like, help a lot of my kids. And taking on that perspective and kind of adding some layers to it has really benefited my teaching this year as well, I think. Awesome. Very cool. So it sounds like, yeah, I remember that conversation and, 
you know, this happens a lot. Like I, I even, it happens with my own kids, right. Where they, you know, they might come home with something and, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there's many other parents out there as well, where, you know, you're not there in the classroom with your kids to know exactly how it was presented. And it doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad thing or a good thing right. in, in how they were shown, but it's like, if we're not sure where that starting point, that could be kind of difficult. And, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, when, when students are coming to you, like you had mentioned doing it kind of like how you might tutor a student, like, are you, how, how, how do you approach that situation? So a student, you know, is, it would, would come to you, let's say in a tutoring scenario or in this, in this uh, remediation sort of role, how do you get a, a sense as to where students are and where, you know, you want to sort of pick things up in order to start making that connection? Um, or is that yeah. something maybe that you're still kind of working on or, or still kind of uh, grappling with? No, that's a really good question. I actually start every day in all of my classes with a Desmos warm up. Uh, and it's usually just like a quick little check in. Um, and I use it to help facilitate the conversations of where I want to go today. Um, and I don't really do it for correctness necessarily. I try to see how are they annotating on the pictures? How are they commenting on them? So I can see kind of what language they're using because it's probably what language they've seen from either heard from their teachers or seen in their looking ahead online. Um, and I kind of use that to figure out where they are and also even if it's just to connect yesterday's lesson with today's lesson uh, to kind of help them build that intuition, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's tends to be, I start every day with that Desmos warm up and a healthy discussion around those problems. Right. I'm, uh, I'm curious about the, some of those, those things that you changed and, and then you continue to do here uh, with your, with your new groups. Um, I remember that when we chatted, there was that disconnect between kids not feeling that success when they went back because it, they didn't feel it was the same math and they felt like, Hey, right. this wasn't exactly what's happening over there. So I'm, I'm curious, did you, after making some of these changes and, and approaching it from, from that from that end, did you start to see a change in the kids in the kids and what they were, how they were viewing your class versus the other class? A little bit, not a ton, uh, or not with all of the students, mm -hmm. uh, more specifically, but a lot of them, I focused a, a lot more on now let's think about it this way. Now let's go back to your geometry homework that your teacher gave you. And like, let's think about it this way and trying to really intentionally bridge the gap between those things like let's go back to these problems that you were struggling with and let's see if we can kind of puzzle through them rather than trying to remember step two and three or whatever mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and I think that that intentionality with the connection because before I think I was almost doing my own thing and because I was previewing I was kind of on a different timeline that they weren't seeing that connection I that intentionality, I think, really brought it together for some of the kids. And I won't lie and said it was say it was all of them, but no. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. It never is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, and something I'm thinking about as well is, you know, as we're as we're chatting here too, is like how how you're taking a look at maybe what they're working on and then almost thinking this this would really force you to be pretty nimble in the moment, but to be able to like look at that. And like, mm. feel like, you know, the concept well enough that you might be able to give them a prompt, almost like we wouldn't a problem based lesson, but maybe less, maybe right. less visual, visual, or like, you know, maybe not focusing on this, on the curiosity piece as much, but more or less like asking them sort of like a question that is related to what's happening here, but maybe the student doesn't necessarily realize right away. And in order to kind of get them back to that area. Um, you know, I know yes. that that's something I try with my daughter sometimes, because if we try to just tackle her homework and then I'm trying to help her, like, you know, conceptualize what we're doing at the same time, it's like, she's just sort of like, let's just get to what I was supposed <laughs> to do. Whereas if I ask her like a right. completely different, taking problem, too much time, dad. Yeah. And it's like, I, I'm <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, put that away for a second, like put this over here. And, you know, I ask this problem. 
and sort of like, I just want you to like, think about this one for a second. And, you know, I know we're going to kind of get back to this and make that connection, but you know, she doesn't know that at the time, you know, that's Mm -hmm. something that sort of, you know, pops into my mind as uh, you know, as something to, to maybe consider. Um, I'm wondering if you were to like, look over this past year, maybe related or unrelated to what we had a conversation about last time, uh, what might be a, a recent success for you in, in your education role? Like, you know, if you had to look back and say, you know, here's the thing with educators, we are so hard on ourselves. We're always thinking about the things that don't go right, but there's always things going well every single day, but we just sort of ignore them. So I'm wondering, is there any uh, recent success that uh, that pops into your mind that you might uh, be interested in sharing with the community? Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. The, what we were just talking about made me think about, I recently, at the beginning of this unit in AP Calculus, which is infinite series, um, I structured it like a jigsaw because I have been really Mm -hmm. working on embracing the fact that students are very curious and they like to look ahead. Um, And jigsaws don't happen very often in math. And I feel like it were, it went extremely well because they were teaching themselves all these Mm -hmm. things and they had to learn it so deeply in order to explain it. And I've put a lot of emphasis this year on communication of math because I feel like I'm a mathematician at heart. My I have mm-hmm. advanced degrees in math and the field itself is moving a lot towards communication. And it, I feel like they really developed that deep understanding and were able to very well communicate those things. And they themselves within their groups were able to make the connections that I was trying to help them make. It was really cool to see. That's awesome. It, at the risk of alienating some of our listeners, um, I would I wouldn't mind hearing what topic you were you were uh, doing the jigsaw with. Um, it was for convergence of equ- of infinite series. Oh right, uh, so oh, you, I think I missed all it. The tests. <laughs> He's like, now that you said um, it again, now that you said it, I remember <laughs> you saying that. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. it. I felt like a lot of math requires a lot of interwovenness and doesn't lend itself well to a jigsaw structure but I thought it would be really nice to like enhance that under deep understanding and communication piece Mm -hmm. Um, and this particular unit there's a bunch of tests for people that don't know to determine if an infinite series converges or diverges and um, it was interesting to see especially when someone was presenting to them and their topic related to the topic that was being presented they they were so like oh my gosh they they just saw it right mm. it was really cool mm-hmm. that's awesome right. it, you know yeah. i i what pops into my mind out of the five math proficiencies is this like idea of the adaptive reasoning piece right where it's like being able to actually like articulate your thinking and yes. you know, that it just it sort of takes that conceptualizing to a deeper level, right? It's like, right. you know, I always, I always find this when I listen to a podcast or, or I, I listen to books, I'm not much of an actual reader, I'm a listener. And when I learn something, and I think I know about it, and then you start to have a conversation with someone else about it, and then you start fumbling, and you start to realize <laughs> that, oh, wait a second, I actually don't understand this as well as I thought. And it's sort of, forces right. you to self-reflect and maybe, you know, rethink on it or maybe re-listen or, you know, look it up and, you know, like students get put in that scenario through a jigsaw. But like you right. had said in math, you know, I was, as you said that I was like trying to think of like other maybe topics where a jigsaw would fit well. Right. Cause like you had said, it's not right. like a, you know, in a geography class where it's like, Hey, this group, you know, focus on, you know, Canada yeah. and this group focus on the United States. And then, you know, we'll come back and, you know, we'll it's, share. It could be, it could, yeah, it can be a good review uh, kind of uh, activity where mm-hmm. say yeah. a cor- almost like a, I've used it in, in as a course review when, you know, we're solving equations throughout for different functions and advanced functions. And, you know, sometimes we had, we had a section where we're solving polynomial functions and logarithmic function, you know, and so then one group is, is reviewing and relearning and practicing and being an expert on solving polynomial. And then they branch off and join the groups that, you know, one's doing logarithmic and another group is doing, 
exponential and another group is doing rational functions. And then all of a sudden the right. sharing starts to happen. It's a nice, it's a nice kind of review uh, structure, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's tough to yeah. sometimes fit that in. I've, um, I've done it as a review when I was teaching at the middle school. And then I'm actually thinking about doing it with my geometry kids next unit for, you know, um, segments in a circle. There's, mm-hmm. you know, the core intersecting chords, intersecting tangents and all of those. I felt like mm-hmm. it could go there too. I'm playing right. around with the idea. Haven't solidified anything. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It just, it, it just made me think now that we're hashing on this, uh, like, uh, uh, in that, in geometry, we, we teach in grade 10. Um, uh, we don't call it geometry. Ours is more of an integrated program, but, but, uh, you know, you could have, you could have one group that's all about, you know, the shortest distance between a point and a line, but another group is, you know, solving, uh, finding the, you know, the equations of right bisectors and, and another right. group is doing altitudes. Right. And it's like finding those. That's actually centers. a really, that that's actually a really good idea because I know that that yeah. can become incredibly dry, you it's, know, that, it's that. Chunk yeah. Right. So, so when you got one group focusing on, Hey, we're going to find the ortho center and we're, one group's going to find the, you know, the, the you know, the um, circum center. And then all of a sudden now you've got teaching, reteaching of, of the different strategies for all the different centers. Oh yeah. I like it for that too. And like you said, it helps when you have something that's really boring. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of, right. kind of spreads out the monotony a little bit. Right. So yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know, it's got my wheels turning. Hopefully people are listening, whether, <laughs> whether, whether you're a high school teacher or not, hopefully you're thinking about it. Like what in your course is something that, you know, maybe isn't like the most interesting or is like maybe that topic that, you know, sometimes like there's always that topic where you you're kind of like nah it's not you know you're not super stoked to to dive into it right so um great idea for that so thanks to caitlin for that uh Mm -hmm. caitlin it's been amazing catching up with you we're wondering like what's on your mind lately like we heard about obviously like the jigsaw idea i love that hopefully you know uh that'll that'll get you thinking of, of some other ideas on that. Uh, is, is there anything that's been like, kind of, we always say that pebble in your shoe that you're working on currently, um, that, uh, we might be able to hash out a little bit here, uh, before we wrap in, uh, wrap up our check-in call. Yeah. Um, so like I said, I've always focused on building mathematicians, but I think recently I've been trying to refine that into building mathematician for mathematicians for the world today, whatever that may mean, like a world where they have a calculator in their pocket all the time. And the biggest piece of that for me has been communication, which recently has also been a big focus on the AP exam. And I know not everyone's an AP teacher, but the communication of ideas is really important to me. Um, And I see it in my husband's industry because he's a mathematician. He's a quantitative risk analyst. And a huge part of his job that he didn't expect was having to articulate the math and the modeling that he was doing. Mm -hmm. And so I've been trying to intentionally build questions within the practice, within activities throughout the days and assessments that help build that communication piece where they have to justify what they're doing. because I think that's a really yeah. important part of the math. Um, no, I'm definitely, I'm curious, like, yeah, are, are there any like sort of maybe intentional moves that you've, you've changed in your lessons? Like when you approach your lesson, like I'm, I'm going to just go on a limb and say, like, you're intentionally making sure to ask kids to communicate more. So, you know, I know right. that, but is yeah. there anything that you're, you're doing in your lesson that you've, you're shifting or thinking about changing in order to, encourage more of that or to make that more Mm -hmm. accessible is is there you know just kind of paint us a little picture of what that might look like and sound like so the biggest thing that i've been changing and i guess the easiest thing um was that i've started adding these what i've called curveball questions um and i've been throwing them in on just like practices and everything uh questions that require them to think really deeply but because of that and like make different connections but because of that those curveballs they have to kind of puzzle it out and work it out in a way that Mm -hmm. enforces that communication piece and that analysis piece um 
And then also changing the phrasing of questions to include um, uh, explain what this means in context kind of thing, like that kind of wording, like what does this mean on your picture, that, that type right. of thing. Um, right. So just building those curveball questions to encourage them to have to articulate things better. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think it makes sense. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm wondering also, is there any structural things during your lesson? So you, you've brought up some ideas of like questioning of you've changed the way you've asked questions or structured questions uh, for them to write about or, or discuss. Um, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, if, is there any like specific structural pieces of your lesson flow that you've modified as well to encourage communication with your students, maybe verbally um, or, or it could be I, written? I guess um, I've all, I tend towards a lot of small group work um, because then I can go and like talk with individual groups and I can do that really intentional questioning and really seeing where, um, where they're coming from and mm -hmm. kind of, I do that, that pairing technique. I'm pretty sure I learned that at one of your, uh, like online, uh, what are they called? Uh, webinars. The, webinar. Yeah. yeah there the go. webinars, <laughs> uh, the pairing technique where they say something like, oh, the, the, this line. And then I'm like, oh, the leg of the triangle, like, and we like kind of parrot it back and, um, just to kind of repeat back and refine that language. Um, and then gearing the questions towards encouraging them to share how they're thinking about things. Um, and I've put a really big emphasis on that. I think I love uh, it. Mm -hmm. really just the small group work. Uh, now I'm wondering, is there, is there anything, so it sounds like you've, you've made some intentional moves there. Are there, is there anything like, are you finding, have you, have you hit any roadblocks in, in terms of trying to bring that communication out? Like, are there any um, sort of areas where you're sort of like, ah, right. I, I want it to work well here, but I'm right. Cause it's sounding like it's working the way you're describing. It sounds like what you're doing is working well. Maybe, maybe we're, we're missing that part. I think it works well verbally. And so okay. the roadblock is when they're having to write it and especially when they have to go individually and they like as one of two ways, either mm -hmm. they say something, um, they just write me a super long paragraph and like talk themselves in circles mm -hmm. uh, or they like mix up the words and end up saying something that they didn't intend to say that is, where I know that they intended something that is correct, they end up saying something that's not correct. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, well, you know what though? It's like, kind of like the logic piece. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Go I, ahead, John. I, I I think I know what you're gonna say because I think it's similar <laughs> to say is I I because that happens to me. I, I when I have questions like that on say my written assessments or my written you know turn this in. And, and I actually, I actually love seeing those, you know, and I think, I think it's, it's so great that you're, you're changing to ask for more communication because you get to see more, right? Like you get to see more thinking in the sense that you thought that you knew what you were talking about, but the fact that you wrote this thing also in relation to that thing, we got, we got, a, we got some thinking, <laughs> like we got, a, we got some changes yeah. to make, or we got some help to make right. with this connection. And it's so important to see those, um, uh, I'm wondering also, like, uh, I know Kyle's going to, he actually, I'll just stop because I was going to keep going. But I think you want to jump in. <laughs> well, I think you want to jump in because I know that we were going to say the same, something at the yeah, same time. Yeah, actually, like, so, so pretty much everything you said. And then also, I guess my thought is like, that is maybe feeling like a bit of a roadblock or a struggle, but I think, you know, as John was mentioning, it's almost like a necessary evil, like it's almost necessary. And, and through that, through that iteration of them continually refining and you encouraging them to, to refine, you know, so mm -hmm. like something that is really easy for us as educators to do when we're, when we're actually uh, evaluating something. So, you yes. know, like assessing is one thing, like you assess an observation conversation. Sometimes you even like students submit it and I'm, I'm assessing it and giving it back. It's more for feedback. But at some point, right. it's like you're going to evaluate and it might be used for the report card or whatever it's being used for. 
And oftentimes what we do, and you know, I, I should look to see if there's any research on this, because I, I know the teachers that I've worked with and I know I've done it. You catch yourself kind of filling in the blanks for kids, you know, like when yes. they write something, you're sort of like, and, and you said it, Caitlin, this is what popped into my mind where you were like, I know what they wanted to say, but they didn't say that. Like they said this over here, which is good for you. Like you wish that they said what they were supposed to say, but what it's telling you is that, okay, like they, they likely know more, like, you know, that they know more because you saw them demonstrate this somewhere. And I've conversed with them about yeah. it. Right. And, and you've had these conversations and through the conversation, it kind of molds and, and that's fantastic. Right. But then it goes down on paper and it's sort of like, that is that really what you want to say? And if you even go out of math class and go and like read an essay by a student, right. Or read a story by an elementary student. Like my daughter will write a story and I'll say, okay, read that back. And then she reads it. And then I'm like, is that really what you wanted to say? Right. And like, oftentimes <laughs> she'll be like, yes. And I'm like, okay, read it again. Read it. Again. She said, yes. And then I'll read it. Read out it. Loud. Yeah. And then I'll <laughs> read it. And then she's like, oh, like, no, that's not what I wanted to say. And I think mm -hmm. that is, you know, maybe one of the reasons why so many you know, of us in, in mathematics sometimes maybe push communication to the side is because I think it's hard, right? Like it, to communicate right. is, it, it's like you have to have a really deep understanding in order to actually communicate it. And something that's also interesting is that if students have been sort of learning in a very procedure first sort of um, method throughout all of their learning, you'll notice that any communication that they've done previously is likely just reciting steps, right? Like, so they're just right. saying like, okay, first I did this. And then second, I did that. And that's, mm -hmm. I mean, you're communicating a procedure, which is, is good, but you're the communication I'm getting from you is like, you're looking for like, I want you to like explain how this works. I want to, you know, or... and that is hard, hard stuff. Hmm. Um, so yeah. I'm going to pause there. And yeah, yeah. John, you wanted to, I, actually, into I, I want to ask stuff. one question. I, I guess, I guess when we're, we've, we've been chatting about this, this idea. And I, and I guess my one question back to you, Caitlin is, is why, why is this a roadblock? Like why is reading that a roadblock to you? Well, it's more that I want them to get to that place where they could be effective in that communication because mm -hmm. I think that the logic required is important for all areas. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it's just a useful skill in right. life. For sure. Um, but also it shows me where, where their misconceptions are, I think. Um, and in that way, it's strong. It is a strength. Like I, I right. think that it's important to see those things, but how, I guess I want to know how can I get them to where they're understanding things to a point where they can communicate it. Right. Um, that's yeah. my goal. Right. And I, I guess I'm wondering, like, are, are you seeing maybe is it a roadblock because it comes in the form of an evaluation and you're like, I know. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. So it's like, I know that the kids, they said this to me They I got, you know, I've heard, I've heard good things about this topic. They wrote this thing down, not so great here. Uh, and, and they're like, oh, I wish that was better. Like I, sometimes I, I read that too. And, I, and I'm like, this is an instance where I want my observations and conversations to, ref to be an input on how I say grade a student, but also I want that student to fix it. Like I'm, I'm at this place oh, where true. I want all, all, my, all my tests, all my evaluations, I, I want to throw them back at them and say, look at like, let's make this better. Like uh, we've talked, I think on the podcast here about like this first draft idea, you know, all, all, you know, when you're writing essays, you're writing other classes, like teachers will say, here's your first draft. Let me give you some feedback and then we'll do it again. Like I, I haven't figured all of that out yet in mathematics, especially come valuation time when you have certain rules to follow in your, in your, in your say department. But I definitely want that, that, that say first draft aspect to go back to students and go, let's fix this up and resubmit this. Like, let's make sure that this is what you wanted to say. Let's, let's see how we can fix this to write this more clearly because I, I, my evidence shows that when I do that with my students, the next time they go to write something, it's a little bit better. 
I um I have put uh, I have recently done uh, test corrections with my kids and I always find that it is a huge learning experience for them. I think it's really valuable. Mm-hmm. And it also allows them to fix like on this line of communication, the symbolic communication of what they're actually saying, like what does an equal sign mean? Like, can I put an equal sign here or here? And that piece of the communication as well. Right. Um, when they're looking back at their paper, I'm like, did you really mean to say that y over five was equal to y no you didn't mean to say that like mm-hmm. uh, the, yeah it sounded good that, in your head right, at the time a huge <laughs> i think that's a huge thing that not enough math teachers do is the idea of the first draft of the test corrections yeah and right. i'm i'm yeah like and it almost makes me wonder too and i've never thought of it this way but i even wonder if like you know we kind of reference this idea, like John had, had said it, it's like you read, especially if it's like a written communication piece in, in this assessment or, or evaluation and you read it and sort of, you're like, I know they know more. So it's almost like maybe looking at that section, maybe that section is, is evaluated maybe differently than other parts of, you know, the evaluation, or maybe, you know, there are these sections, but maybe it's almost expected that students are going to, you know, have an opportunity to kind of like, okay, so all these other pieces have been assessed and everything. And, you know, maybe it's almost an expectation that, okay, you're going to like, I'm going to feedback you and then you're going to resubmit. And, you know, almost like this iterative process taking place Mm -hmm. because at, at the end too, it's like, we can, we can, we can stress the importance of communication without it necessarily like negatively impacting say grade. Right. Which I think is always the scary part. Like I think in, especially in secondary, we think that, you know, the way to sort of like make something important is to make it worth more. Right. And I wonder if it's like, is there some sort of like happy medium where obviously it's worth something because, you know, you want students to feel like their time is being well spent, but at the same time that it's not going to, you know, bring them down or that, you know, you don't find yourself in this position, you know, like I said, where you're like, I know they know this. Okay. I'll give it to them, you know, or, or whatever it is. Right. (laughs) Cause you truly want the communication skill. Um, because like you're evaluating that you're not necessarily evaluating, like, you know, the math concept itself. Um, so I don't know if, if you have any thoughts about that, if like, maybe it's like the last question or something where, you know, they can, they can take it. And then, you know, it's like an expectation that, that it's going to be iterated a few times for them to sort of, you know, create this better draft this like good draft this publishable you know piece right (laughs) yeah I like the idea of them being able to keep at it until they get it right um and like you said I think it helps them remember it so that the next time that they encounter something that looks like that maybe they'll remember and if they repeat it there's a higher chance that they'll remember how to do it because they fixed their own thing. And I also like what you said about it being worth not all of the points. (laughs) Right. Um, For, for sure. Like maybe it's one of the four points on that part of a problem or whatever. And um, yeah, uh, you know, I think it depends on grade level, um, different depends on course. Like I've, I've had, you know, courses, grade levels where I, I always just tell kids, especially in younger grades, like everything you do will count, you know, like <laughs> everything, cause, cause everything, everything that you show me or everything, that every conversation, everything we hear in the room should influence you as a teacher on how they are progressing. Therefore that translate should translate or can translate into a grade of where they are at a snapshot in a moment when you have to go down to put a report card mark down. Right. So like I tell kids right. that everything you do is going to count. So when the kids say like, does this count for marks? Like, <laughs> yes, it counts because everything you show me will influence the number I put down on that page because I need a sense of where you are on all these concepts. So when I ask kids to turn it in, like it's a mandatory thing, we got to turn that back in after you fixed with the feedback. 
Does it count? Yes, it counts. Now, some Always classes I, I say, I don't tell them how much it counts. Like it, you'll just, we just hand it in until it's perfect. And I'm not going to like say you get two more marks on it or one more mark on it. It just counts and it will help uh, if you do it that way. Um, and what do you, yeah, go ahead. Well, uh, I was just going to say that's kind of how I've structured support and to a lesser degree on level classes just because they need that to yeah. have the motivation a lot of the time um and i i love the we're gonna keep at this until you get it because i know it almost conveys a sense of confidence like i know that you can get it right like you yeah. will get there um and a lot of those kids really need that and um i definitely don't Feel the need to count everything in a class like AP Calculus, where they have opted into this more challenging math class. It's just a different environment. Right. Yeah, the, um, the 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 you know what they're expecting to sort of be up against is you know very different than you know say a, a remediation class or or something right. like that, right? So it's going to vary for sure. Um, yeah, that that's awesome. And like lots of really good thoughts here. And I know, I know for me, like even I was even just kind of thinking too, is like, you know, if, if let's say you have this, this assessment and maybe every part has like a communication piece to the side where it's almost like you can see, so like there's less questioning where like, I know I've done it where sometimes it'll be a question that I'm focusing on communication, but you know, the rest of the test is like, I'm focusing on, you know, okay, show me that you can calculate, show me your strategy and so on and so forth. It's almost like right. you can have maybe like almost like a side by side. So it's like, if they, you know, where they communicate, like you can see over here what they did, um, that's communication as well. But if let's say you wanted more right. of like, you know, a verbal explanation or something to the side, you can have kind of like a side by side there where you can kind of see like, oh, I see that, you know, over here, it looks like you're you know, you've got a good strategy and it, it makes sense, but over here, you're having right. a hard time sort of articulating like why you did what you did or how, how you did what you did. Um, that could right. also be helpful too, because, you know, you kind of go, okay, so the issue specifically is communication itself and articulate like that adaptive reasoning skill that we want to work on. You seem to conceptually right. get it over here and procedurally get it. Um, and even like your strategic competence is, is showing here, but it's like, again, it's like that that being able to sort of like, you know, convey the why behind it is a bit of a struggle. So that could be an option too, um, when you're, when you're setting up some of those questions. Yeah. And I like that because it, so in my class, I also use this like self-assessment guide that I made a long time ago, um, where it's like a one is I can't do this. And a two is I could do this. I just need like mm -hmm. a tiny bit of support. A three is yeah, I can do this thing. And then a four is I could explain it. So it would kind of help. It would, that would, right. what you just said would really align with that. Are you at a two, three or four? Like, Oh yeah, that's great. That's right. a really that yeah. parallel. Yeah. That's a great connection I like that a for lot. sure. Yeah. Yeah. I was just along that lines this is just a, a little tidbit. I was, uh, I was looking at some resources online from one of our friends from Waterloo, Kyle, uh, Alita Klassen's resources that they've been working with grade nine and they have uh, fire emojis. Yes. Uh, yes. For spicy. like one, two, three. They're like, how spicy is this? this how, <laughs> how spicy are you on this particular uh, topic? You know, you have, are you on a one spice or are you on hot? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's the same one, two, three, four, but it's just, it's just your spicy level. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Caitlin, uh, this, I'm, I'm curious here about, uh, we've had a, a great conversation here tonight and, and also, uh, learned a lot about what's happening with you. And I, I'm curious about what you would you say is your say biggest takeaway from this past year, um, and, or, or tonight's conversation. Oh, that's a hard one. Biggest takeaway from the last year is <laughs> honestly, That's a hard question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we won't throw that uh, that big of a time span next time. That's uh, we're gonna yank that question for sure. <laughs> how how about from tonight's um, conversation? Because I, I there you go for the past year. That's a toughie. That's a that's yeah. a toughie. We we didn't tell you to prepare for that one. 
Well, I mean, there's a lot of takeaways from the last year, but this conversation, I think that with all this talk of communication and everything, that it doesn't have to be like all the time or everything, and it can just be a way to for me to gather information. Um, and it doesn't have to necessarily negatively impact the students. And I love the idea of iterating it until we get it right, both because it gives them the chance to not have that negatively impact their grade, but also the sense of confidence and accomplishment that they'll get when they do finally get it. I really like that. I love um, it. So Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. And, you know, I'm picturing too your groupings, like you were saying, like you have small <laughs> groups, students could be, you know, having that conversation with one another, you know, like why, you know, how can I improve this, you know, and having another student as well, sort of, uh, sort of iterate through that oh, with yeah. them as well. So very cool. This has been an awesome conversation. It's so great when we get an opportunity to bring people on, uh, to, you know, sort of check in, see where people are at. It's always awesome as well. Uh, I don't know if you did re-listen to the original episode, but I know when we go back, <laughs> you know, a year and listen to things like just thinking of how your thinking evolves and, you know, how things change. It's much like, like in, in the math class, right? Like we want students to kind yeah. of like see that growth, see that change. And uh, us as educators as well, uh, there's so much growth happening all the time. It's really easy to miss. Um, so hopefully uh, if you haven't gone back and listened <laughs> to that episode again, there, uh, there, Kate, uh, you should definitely do that. And uh, my friend, it's been an honor. Maybe we'll be able to get you back in about a year's time where <laughs> can I cross fingers and say for sure COVID's not going to be an issue by then. Uh, it might <laughs> still be you around. You wrecked it. You I wrecked know, it. I know. I know. Here we go for another year. But uh, it's been awesome. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. And uh, we hope to uh, hope to catch up with you again sometime soon. Yeah, thank you. It's been great. Take care. Well, Math Moment Makers, as always, we learn so much from these episodes. And again, how awesome is it to be able to hear how someone's learning, how far they've come, their growth um, from where they were just a, a short year ago. It's just been mm -hmm. just over mm -hmm. a year uh, when we chatted with Caitlin. And now she's on to some completely different ideas right now, all around communication. It was great to have that conversation, try to figure out how does communication sort of fit in um, you know, it, when we want to emphasize it in our classrooms, but then also how might it Im impact or influence our assessments, our evaluations, yeah. and of course mm -hmm. that, that ultimate, that final grade, uh, you know, I think we had a lot of really great ideas sort of uh, flourishing here. So I hope you just like us are going to walk away from this episode thinking more about, Hey, how can we ensure that we are helping our students to become better communicators? Right. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that good summary there, Kyle. And we also want to remind you about how you can ensure that the learning here that you've taken away from this episode sticks with you. Uh, we uh, we've often recommended, you know, journaling about it, uh, drawing, you know, a sketch note or drawing some notes in your uh, maybe your day planner, um, talking about it with a colleague or a friend. Um, any way that you can communicate some of the ideas that you're, you're battling with, because maybe you heard something here that you want to implement, or maybe have questions, uh, find someone um, to do that with. You could reach out to anyone, anyone in our free private Facebook group, Math Mo Makers K to 12. We've got a great community over there to support you. Um, or you can tag us on Twitter or Instagram at Make Math Moments. But uh, think about what you want to do if you need support. Hey, we're here for you that as well. Awesome stuff. And uh, have you head over to makemathmoments.com forward slash mentor yet? Mm -hmm. uh, if not, you should head on over there, enter in. Really, it's just more or less a one liner, but you can elaborate if you'd like on the current pebble that's uh, kicking around in your shoe right now. Something that you're grappling with in your classroom might be a classroom struggle, or maybe it's just a goal that you have and you're just trying to work towards that goal and you're not so certain on where to go next. You know what? Three ba brains are better than one. So mm -hmm. come on the mm -hmm. podcast with us. Let's have a chat about it. And uh, who knows, maybe a year from now, uh, you'll be coming back on like Caitlin to have a where are they now episode. In order to ensure you don't miss out on new episodes, as uh, we put one out each Monday morning, subscribe over on your favorite podcast platform. Also, hey, 
jump on over to YouTube and subscribe over there as well. We have uh, our weekly episodes go there to see video versions or we or, or and I should say Cal and hmm. we also in that same week, we'll put out another video that's a helpful teacher tip or uh, a teacher idea or a lesson idea. So check out and subscribe over on YouTube. Awesome. Head over to makemathmoments.com forward slash episode 173 if you want to check out the show notes, the resources, even our complete downloadable transcripts. Uh, you can grab them and take them with you. Once again, that's at makemathmoments.com forward slash episode 173. Well, until next time, Math Moment Maker friends, I'm Kyle Pierce. And I'm John Orr. High fives for us. And high five for you.